So, hey. Do you know that feeling when you realize Blender has an array modifier, but only after you... Wait a second. I've used that joke before. Well, let's just go straight to the tutorial then. Tip number one. Manipulate center points. Normally in Blender, when you try to scale a lot of objects, like these four wheels, for instance, um, this happens. The wheels get distorted and stuff. And if you don't want that to happen, just check this button down here. Then Blender will only manipulate the center points of the objects, but it will not like distort the objects, like scale them on their individual axis. The same goes for the rotation. If you click the button, the, the individual objects will not rotate, but only um, in relation to each other. Tip number two, selecting faces with similar normals. It is very beneficial to know a lot of tools to quickly uh, select the faces and the vertices you want to select. So for instance, if I want to select all these faces up here, um, and those are pointing in the same direction, like um, the blue arrow. Instead of selecting all of them with shift clicking, I can just select one of them, press Control, Shift, Alt and F. And now I can use this sharpness as a threshold. So the higher this angle value is, um, the more faces uh, will be selected, even though they have like a, a more sharp angle um, compared to the original face. Tip number three, using group instances to save memory. Okay, so say I want to add a lot of these clamps or whatever they're called along this tube. You can use the, the Alt-D method, which, well, when you do that, you reuse the mesh data, so you will save a bit of memory. But a better way to do it is actually to add all of these objects into one group and call this group click me or whatever you want. Um, now you can just search for the group and you have a lot of these instances right here. And they actually use almost no memory at all uh, compared to other duplicating methods. So I did some testing. These are uh, group instances and these are duplicates uh, with shared mesh data. So, and yeah, the render time not really any difference, but if you look at the memory, you'll see that this one right here, which is the group instances, it uses only 30 megabytes of video RAM compared to this one, which uh, which is the uh, yeah the shared mesh data uh, method, which uses almost three times as much memory. Tip number four: placing objects using the snap tool. If you want to add um, some more bolts on this front bubble right here, instead of trying to just get it right with with moving the um, with moving the bolts manually, you can use the snapping function or the snapping tool. So click uh, the, yeah, the magnet thingy, choose face, and then be be sure to check this, this box right here because then it will also take the rotation into account. So now when we try to move this, when we move this object, um, it's automatically snapping to, um, to the bumper. Tip number five, disabling that irritating note pushing um, thing. Well, sometimes you have a very complex material and you have like a web of nodes. And Blender is trying to help you by by like pushing around the nodes to make make space for the new nodes. But I find this a bit bit irritating from time to time. So you can just click this button down here to like disable that feature. And then you'll be able to manage the nodes on your own. Tip number six, Blender on multiple screens. If you're working with multiple screens, you can always just press Control Alt and then W to open up a new window window in Blender. Now you can just push this window to another screen and when you close one of the windows the other one will still be open and you can still save your work and stuff. Tip number seven, using multiple UV maps. When I'm making materials I don't like making custom textures for everything. That's just my preference. Um, but the downside of having multiple textures for one object can be that the UV mapping um, will not work with both, both textures. In this case, that is true. For instance, if I make this UV map right here, which fits the texture down here, it won't fit the texture up here. But in Blender, you can actually have multiple UV maps. This might be a bit obvious to some people, but it actually took me a lot of time to notice it. And you can even like control which textures uses which UV maps in the node editor. So just add in a UV map node and choose the, the image texture you want, or the, the UV you want the image texture to, texture to use. So now I can see our um, on the side of the of the of the tire we have this uh, the side texture, and we have the lines grungy texture around the tire. Now you can just mix these two if you want. Tip number eight: the quick way to apply a lot of modifiers. Now we have this group instance right here, and we can just make it real. So type make real. You can also press Shift Control A. 
but now we have a lot of different objects with different modifiers on them. Um, so instead of going through all of these objects and applying all the modifiers, we can just cheat a bit. So select all the objects and then press Alt C and then convert mesh from curve, meta, surf, text, whatever. So not only does this turn curves into meshes, but it also applies all modifiers and everything for you. So that was it for my second quick tip tutorial. If you have some awesome tips, feel free to share them in the comments below. After all, open source is all about sharing. Anyways, thank you so much for watching my video. If this is your first visit, please consider subscribing. And yeah, I know I'm so creative when it comes to naming my videos. <laughs> well, nothing else to say then. Have a good day, people.